Okay, guys, so today's talk is IP tables, and essentially IP tables is packet filtering in a firewall. So we all know what a firewall is, right? IP tables is essentially used as a firewall, but it has other features. So what is IP tables? IP tables is a user space command line program used to configure Linux packet, packet filtering rule sets. It's a firewall, essentially. Right? So here we have two flowcharts of IP tables. Uh, on the left, we have uh, this flow of traffic through a network using IP tables. And then this graphic up here, this other flowchart, is about the rules and chaining of IP tables. So IP tables has three uh, possibilities of use. Um, one is filtering, the second is mangling, and the third is natting. So IP tables is not strictly a firewall in the sense that uh, you block traffic or you allow certain traffic, but it's also used to modify header information of traffic and also netting. So if you have multiple computers behind one public interface, you can use IP tables to do the net routing for you. So when a request comes in from the internet, it goes through three, these three stages. The raw pre-routing, manual pre-routing, and NAT pre-routing. Uh, what we're going to talk about today, we don't even need to worry about that. We're just going to be focusing on the filtering of input. That's it. Uh, but essentially, uh, raw is the raw packet information. Mangle is used to change the quality of service bit on an IP packet. Okay? And NAT pre-routing is essentially you take in an incoming connection and you decipher which computer you want to send it to. So the NAT pre-routing would allow you to change which, which IP you want to send something to. Uh, so once you touch all these, you have a decision. Either you're going to forward the packet to another computer or you're going to process it onto your machine. Essentially, you have the same information again, manual filter, and then you have the, your machine. Uh, filter is, again, what we're going to be focused on today. Right? So all we got to do is look at it this way. We come in from the real world, we look at our rules, our chain rules, and we're just going to apply a filter, do whatever we need to on that machine, and then spit it back out to the internet, back as a reply. So this flowchart up here, is essentially the filtering uh, of IP tables. So IP tables has chains, it has tables and chains. So a table is uh, mangle, mat, and filter. Those are the three tables. You can have your own user-defined tables, but we're not going to talk about that. So in this case, we're certainly talking about filters. So there's multiple chains you can have, and uh, the importance of that I'll explain later. But the idea of this chart is so you understand that you know, ordering is really important in IP tables. So, if you have bad ordering on your rules of your IP tables, you can kick yourself out or prevent traffic from flowing correctly as you logically think. So, in this case, you have five rules. And you see that rule three, if it's true, it sends you to this other chain and follows these other rules. You might think, you know, by appending a new rule, that, you know, it'll go through the whole list and go to the one that's true or it, you, you might think when you program it that, you know, rule three is true, but I'm going to go to rule four first instead of going to this chain. It's a little confusing right now, I know, but it'll clear up soon, hopefully. Uh, this slide is loading. Okay. So what are we talking about? We're talking about packet filtering, right? So we're going to be looking at the header information of a packet and decide what we're going to do with it, okay? Why do we use firewalls? Why are we going to do this? Uh, one, for control. We want to specifically direct traffic to one place. The other is security. We want to prevent other people from getting into our system from possible openings. And the third option is we want to know what's going on with our network. Okay. So traffic can be filtered in these, um, these basic uh, characteristics. So we have a source and destination IP where uh, a packet's going to go to, source and destination port, uh, the protocol type that it's being run at, and uh, we have states, you know, uh, whether it's an established connection, whether it's a new connection, whether it's a rejection, we have states. So that's the real basic of IP table filtering right there. Okay. So let's briefly just talk about ports again. 
there are 65,000 ports on the system. Uh, the first uh, 1,024 are reserved, and we can actually see what those processes are, what those ports correspond to by doing ET services. So if we want to just take a look at that, we can see a full list of the first um, 1024 of what those ports correspond to. Actually, this list is even more comprehensive. What was that? Uh, we're just cat catting the Etsy services file. Let me just change this font real quick so you can see it. Okay, so that was just simply catting the Etsy services file. So now we're just going to briefly talk about protocols. There are three types of protocol. There's TCP, which is really just uh, persistence. If you want persistence between your packets, you're going to use TCP. It's also used for reliability. UDP, uh, it sends information statelessly, so you don't need to know if you're connected or not or established or whatnot. Um, it's really a best effort protocol. So you send the packet, you really don't know if it's going to get there. You really don't care. You use it for video and voice communication. And then there's ICMP, and it's just um, for administrative purposes to see if a host is alive, if a host is working and running properly. So those are the basics, and uh, hopefully the examples we go over today will help verify those. So IP tables, uh, like any Linux function, has set operations, set parameters that it uses. These are the real basics that you're constantly going to be using. Dash L to list the rules. Dash F will flush the rules. And, uh, you know, dash J to jump to a target, chain target. Uh, hopefully with examples this will become clear. You guys don't have to memorize this right now. Like I said, the most useful ones are list, append, flush, and target. Those are the ones you're going to constantly be seeing. So again, I'll explain why you have these other options, insert, replace, and append, um, mainly because that has to do with the order in which you structure your rules. So the way we filter packets coming into your system is by matching them on certain standards, right? So if we, we can match on where that IP is coming from, on the packet where it wants to go. Uh, we can use basic subnet masks and we can use, you know, certain rules like negation if we don't want that port or that IP. Uh, we have these other parameters, interface and uh, incoming interface and outgoing interface. And that tells you if you have multiple NICs on your computer. You can specify if it's coming in through this NIC or that NIC what to do to separate things. So maybe, you know, Ethernet 0 is coming from the inside and ETH1 is just for your local network. So you would apply rules differently. Same thing. No. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. So, right. You can apply the rule depending on, like, if you have ETH0, you can apply a dash I ETH0. And that says only on incoming requests. Right. And then dash O, eat zero, you can apply strictly on outgoing requests. So it's just like more control over where you're going to send the packet. Right. But uh, you can also use, your, use it to specify that eat zero is going to follow these subset rules in this particular way, and eat one is going to have a different set of rules, right? So it's a way of filtering packets down in a slightly deeper level if you have you have to. Okay, then there's the M tag, which stands for matching. So in this case, we're, we're looking at the state of the packet, and we're going to say, uh, if this packet coming in matches one of these states, whether it's a new, new state, established state, or related state, uh, we're going to follow these rules. So again, there's further match criteria. We can match on the protocol. So if we want to only filter out TCP data, we'll use dash P TCP. Or if we want UDP or ICMP, we can filter that way. Uh, again, we can filter by the port and port range. So if we only want to filter 
uh, traffic on port 80. We only want to allow traffic from 80 coming in. We would use dash P source port 80. No web coming in will, come in will be allowed into our system. Again, P, TCP, sync, whether or not uh, a new connection request is coming in. It's, just, it's a useful tag that you'll probably use more often than the rest. Uh, so, what I just showed you in the previous slide was matching on a single port or range. So if you want to block a range of ports, you'd say one through a thousand, and those ports can be blocked or allowed. The difference between multi-port is uh, they might not be in a range. So you might want to just allow only web services. So you'd allow port 80 and 443. So you'd use this tagging system to say multi-port, source port, 80 comma 443. And that's how you would define those two. Not that important, but it's useful in the future. So, like I said, there's tables, chains, and rules. There's targets as well. And targets fall under the chain. Yeah, chain. So, the target is what you're going to do with that packet. So there, these are the possible options you have. You can make a log of that packet coming in through your system with putting it to log. You can accept it, which will just accept that traffic. You can reject it, which will drop it and also send it back a, a status code to the person asking that. Whoever asks will get a, a code that says, you know, this is not available. Or you can drop the packet without sending any response back. So the person who requested it will never know. And then, like I said before, uh, IP tables can be used for NATing. So you can change uh, the destination IP and the source IP and the ports. And you can manipulate, basically, the IP status of that packet before it gets sent out and comes in. So here's a brief view of the states. These are the three common states, new, established, and related. And this only applies to TCP connections. Uh, UDP is stateless. So if you have a new state and you want to filter based on states, this is how you do it. You apply this dash m state new or state established or related. These are the chain tables. So by default, there's three. You can define your own. There's filter, NAT, and mangle. So if you want to filter traffic, which is all we're going to do, you're going to look at this table. So these are the possible three options we have. We can filter, uh, we can forward to send that packet to a new destination. We can uh, filter what's coming into our server and what's coming out to our server. So, again, when you see the examples, hopefully these things will make sense. What I'm doing now is I'm giving you guys table layouts so that when you have to write your own rules, you can look at the table and quickly piece things together. So, here we are at the demos. So. Uh, I don't know if you can all see that, maybe a little small, but uh, the most common common rule with IP tables, common parameter is L. And it's just listing the rules we have. Right now, uh, doing IP tables dash L, we'll see that there's no rules. Right? So there's no input rule, forward rule, output rule. And this is strictly for the filter table. It's not showing you the NAT or the uh, main rule. So we can just do the same example here, and here we have that same screenshot. There's no rules right now. Okay. So let's say we want to stop people from pinging our machine, right? So we can do this little test. We can ping whatever machine we specify one time and see if we get a result. So without IP tables, right, this will go through perfectly, and we'll get one packet transmitted, one received. Okay, so let's try that out. A little test, so ping localhost dash C one time. And so one packet transmitted, one packet received. You can see that there's no IP tables blocking it. So let's go back. Um, so now we're going to create our first IP table rule. All right. So this is how the syntax goes. We do IP tables dash A input. And 
what we're specifying here is uh, the input chain. I mean, we're, we're saying what channel we're going to use, uh, we're going to listen on the input, so anything coming into us. Then we're going to specify the protocol, because we've decided we're going to block all ping, all, all, all sort of ICMP protocol. So we're saying dash P, ICMP, this protocol, and we're going to jump, it says jump to drop. So anything coming in on protocol ICMP, let's drop it. So IP tables, dash I, dash A, and dash P, ICMP, dash J, drop. Okay. So I just declare that rule, and let's run that ping one more time. So right now the ping's running, and it's hung up. Right? It's hung up because we're not sending a rejection back. We're just dropping the packet. So it has no idea whether or not it went through or not. And so finally, the time to live expired, and we got one packet transmitted, zero received. So we've effectively blocked ICMP traffic on all NICs in this case, on all interfaces. Okay, so now, uh, instead of dropping them, let's send a reject. Maybe one, we want to tell them that you know, we're rejecting this packet, this type of packet. So let's flush the tables, right, dash F to flush all the rules. Uh, we can take a look, and now that list is empty. And we can do IP tables, reject. So it's the same rule, but this time, instead of dropping the ICMP packets, we're going to reject them. So now if you run that ping command one more time, uh, we should get a reject code. Maybe it's not. Okay. So now we're going to have to Right, so like Tom said, right, so what we're blocking here is incoming requests, right? So we're trying to do a ping uh, localhost. So that's coming into us, but we're rejecting that right away. So our computer doesn't know we're trying to do a ping. Because you're well, blocking it both ways. Yeah. yeah. So it's not letting it out. Right. And that's why you don't see the reject. It doesn't well, no, even you are letting it out. No, you're not letting it out. You're yeah. letting it out, but you're blocking it from ever coming in. You're getting, you're not getting the reject back. Yeah, because you're only um, blocking the input, the input chain. Okay. Okay. So let's flush it and let's modify that query one more time. So let's allow incoming to come in, right? We're not gonna have any rules blocking incoming requests. We're only going to block up uh, what? <laughs> okay. Someone rebooted the system? That's probably the Russian Oh, shit, what time is it? <laughs> yeah! Off and falling. No, no, this machine wasn't involved in anything. Sure. No. Oh, I, I got out of 108. Oh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so oh, you were in 108? Why are you in? 110 doesn't respond. Oh. <laughs> Try 109. Yeah, 109. Wait. Do, 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 do. 110 is what we changed the three machines IP to. 3 dot 106. It's set to us. Okay. What's the password? Yeah. All found? It's a default one. Like the default one for the news. And 00 BD Okay. Alright, so let's take a look at the, the IP tables rules on this computer. So there are rules. Right, should we take a look at the rules? Are you interested? So here we did a listing of all the IPT rules on this machine. I didn't create these. Uh, so if we take a look, 
we're going to accept all traffic coming in from anywhere and going anywhere where the state is related, established, and established. So what this line says is that any already connected uh, connection to this machine, we're going to leave it alone. Then we're going to accept all ICMP. Regardless, we're going to accept all ping requests and all sorts. Uh, we're going to accept all protocol traffic where the state is new. No, not every These are kind of weird. <laughs> From anywhere to anywhere. From anywhere, okay, yeah. TCP, right? No, the one above. The one above, yeah. It's accepting every day. Everything. <laughs> okay, all yeah, except this. Yeah, so this rule is useless right here. So Actually, all of them are wrong. They're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> get to this. Right. Well, the bomb is rejected. <coughs> right, but, but you, you never go through yeah. in the oh, yeah, yeah. Right. So this is actually a great example of why the ordering of the rules is really important. So I didn't create these. I have no idea what put these on, but they did a bad job. So the first rule says we're going to allow any protocol, anyone who's already connected to the machine, to stay connected. That's pretty good. I mean, uh, so... If we're doing IP tables, we SSH into the machine. We want to make sure that any IP tables we create is not going to kick us off. So you would add this first, maybe for testing, right? And uh, that would make sure that if you put an IP table that kills all SSH, you don't get kicked off of the machine at that point until you try coming back in. Then it says allow all ICMP anywhere coming in. And then we have this, except all traffic. TCP, UDP, and ICMP coming from anywhere, going anywhere, regardless of anything. Just accept it. So once it reaches this rule, all traffic is done. It's going to reach its destination and reply. It's never going to look at any of these other rules. So, do you guys understand that? When we hit this point, we're never going to drop a packet. Even though over here it specifically says uh, to reject and right even though here it says rejects regardless. So in this case, this firewall does nothing. Everything's open. Doesn't the line for except TCP specify state new TCP and TPC and SSH? Right. But yep. the problem is the rule above it says we're going to accept all traffic regardless. Take a look at the rules like in verbose mode because it'll list like uh, what interface. interface. So it might be like different interfaces. Right, it's oh, the loop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, so who wrote these rules anyway? Default. Okay, default. Oh, they're default. <laughs> okay, so now the table is Okay, so now here we're showing the interface that it's running. So this rule makes a lot more sense now. It says anything on the loopback adapter, we're going to accept. Uh, which you would do that because services on the machine talk to each other through the loopback adapter. They don't go through on the wire. To stay on the machine. Um, then we have, we're going to accept all TCP coming anywhere, going anywhere, where it's a new state and it's of uh, SSH. You're trying to get SSH in. Good question. And then after that, we said reject all anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Uh, ICMP host. That just means that you'll send the ping back and that it's rejected. So this line right here uh, is going to reject any and all other traffic on this machine. So from the previous three rules, we're going to accept anything locally, we're going to accept any ICMP requests, and we're going to only allow incoming SSH. Anything else, we're going to reject. And we're going to let them know that we rejected it. That's what reject means. Um, so those rules make a lot more sense looking at the interface now. So let's flush it. How did you look at the interface? Uh, verbose. Dash V for verbose. So this is the point where I normally always kick myself off. You're okay now. <laughs> you have to look at the default policy. And yeah. Up at the top it says policy accepts. So you're fine. Okay. Good. <laughs> right. So this is the place where a lot of people kill themselves. Because when they set their rules, they might have a default policy Anything coming in, reject or drop. Right? Even though they have these rules that will bypass them. Uh, so when you flush the tables, it's not going to restore that back into accept mode. It's going to leave it on reject. And there's going to be no rules, so any traffic will just be killed right, automatically. 
Uh, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to do IP tables dash F, IP tables dash X, and IP tables dash Z. And that clears all that information. Um, Now, if we take a look at our list, it's empty. Okay, so we're good. We're starting with a new empty set of rules. So again, what were we trying to do from the beginning? We were trying to block reject ping requests. So let's go back to doing that. Right? So let's ping local hosts. Let's send one ping request. And we received it without a problem. Right. One packet transmitted. One received. So now let's do a reject statement and say IP tables dash A output um, protocol ICMP dash jump drop uh, reject. So now we're gonna we're gonna stop any um, outgoing replies from ping. Right? That's the idea. Idea. So. So since we're running it on the same machine, we sent the ping request, and then we got a message saying that we can't, we're not allowed to ping out. Okay. It, it makes sense. It's not a great example, but um, we're not. Our IP table is blocking us from sending a reply back. You want a way to get to it? Uh, I'll show you a cooler thing to do after this. With so. From a defensive point of view, why do you guys think we would want to block uh, ICMP traffic? Host discovery. Host discovery? You don't want them to use that map on us? Yep. So these are good. Um, so, like you had. You, know, you wouldn't want to allow the uh, ping packets to be sent from these services because they could contain uh, data from the corporation and possibly more chips. Right. So, for the competition, most likely what we'd want to do is block all incoming and outgoing ICMP because these might be compromised machines, so we don't want any information possibly getting linked out through ICMP. It's possible to send information through a ping packet and uh, exploit a machine. There are exploits to do that. So the next rule we're going to do is allow all connections on the loopback interface. Uh, like that previous rule we had, um, the loopback interface is needed for services on the machine to communicate with each other. So we don't care about blocking. So again, we do IP tables. We specify the chain, in this case input. We specify the interface, with the incoming interface with dash I uh, low for the loopback. And then we're going to jump to accept. So this is the first rule we're going to have. So in this case, we're going to accept all local, all local communication. So let's flush. What we have now is we're going to start from scratch. We're going to table dash uh, add info dash. What did I do? Oh, we're, we're allowing all traffic on localhost. Um, jump to accept. So. We have one rule on our IP table right now. Right. And so we're going to accept all traffic from anywhere going anywhere on our local host. Uh, right, Does anyone have any questions right now? difference between dropping and rejecting a packet? So dropping, we don't send the response back to the incoming request, right? So dropping, um, they have no idea whether it's up or not or what's going on. Rejection, we, we notify them that we've rejected their packet. So you close the connection or whatever? Yeah, we close it and then we send a message back saying that you know, we're not accepting this.
So now let's make our second rule. So our second rule is going to be uh, allow any connections already established on the machine to stay open. And allow um, right, just any, any machine states we have to stay open. We're only doing this temporarily so that we don't get kicked off our machine through IP Davis. So let's go ahead and add, come on, who's in there? I'm going to kill you, Jeff. <coughs> so, IP tables? You should block Joe. <laughs> I could. Now we know. We can. Alright. So, do you guys want to learn how to block Joe? Are you still connected? Oh, no, no. No, I didn't. I, I, I'm not connected. I'll create you. So, you in, Joe? It's taking a long time to watch the So I'm assuming Joe is on um, 102, 10.8.0.102. Unless someone else is in SSH. Because I'm logged right, in. I'm, I'm in right now. I'm logged in for this IP for SSH, and someone else is also logged in for this same machine on SSH. <laughs> so let's kill Joe. So again, we can verify 10.8.0.102. So we can do IP tables dash. <laughs> I'm gonna be paying the answer. So what do you get? What are we gonna do? Who wants to say? So what do you for add a rule? Append. A is for append. Oh, okay. So it adds to the end of the list. <laughs> so append to input. We're gonna block all incoming connections, right? Um, where the source. Is it not just S. S. IP. And the source of the IP is 10.8.0.102. And we're going to jump to the drop table. Okay, so does everyone understand what's happening here? Does this look good to people? Oh no! <laughs> Joe got kicked off. Verify it. So we can do a net stat dash net stat dash AMP. And uh, we can see that it's still established with the configuration. Had we added that other rule to allow established connections, Joe would still be in their system. So Joe, don't bother like SSHing some of the places before I like to see what you can do. So we're going to allow previously established states to continue persistent. <laughs> 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 That's cheating, I know. You're on two other... Hey, don't block that one. Did you get off? Yeah, I got off. So we're going to do IP tables. <laughs> we're going to uh, append a new rule. So we're going to append to the input. And we're going to say, we're going to match on the state being established. Can't do dash dash state. Related, okay. Dash, dash, dash. No. And match state and then dash dash state. Establish, related, and uh, we're going to jump to accept. That's the case. So any incoming connections uh, where we're already established with our line, we're going to accept it. And we're just going to do the same thing on our outbound connection. So now if we look at our IP tables list. You should see those new rules added. So we have allow all traffic on local host, drop all traffic coming from Joe, except all traffic where we have our established connection already. So let's be a little bit more creative. So let's allow inbound SSH and web. Uh, connections to this machine. So in this case, you know, we're going to append to our input chain uh, on protocol TCP, where our destination ports are 22 and 8, SSH and web. And we're going to jump to the accept state. So IP tables dash 
depends uh, to the input. Uh, protocol TCP, destination port 80, so we're going to jump to accept. The destination port 22. So actually with IP tables, if you know the service, right, 22 is for SSH and uh, 80 is HTTP. So I could have just wrote, written SSH and HTTP there, in other words. But I think it's easier with the ports. So we can verify that we added those by listing it, and we can see two new rules added here. So as of right now, these rules don't make sense because we're, we're allowing all traffic, we're not blocking anything, but we're going to get to that soon. We're doing it in a specific order so we don't kick ourselves out. So now we've, we've decided that this is all the traffic we want to allow, and we're going to just deny anything else coming in or going out. So here we are. IP tables dash uh, P. I think I need to. So we can do input. Uh, we're jump to drop. Yes. Drop. I have So now, if we take a look at the list, this makes a little bit more sense. So. Any incoming requests, we allow it if it's HTTP and SSH, and any already established connections we're going to allow. So after we've reached this date, if um, any of the packets coming in don't match these rules, it's going to arrive from its rule and it's going to just drop. The same thing with any outbound going. So we're only allowing established outbound connections. We're going to drop anything else. So right now, I can't actually talk out to the real world. So I, I shouldn't be able to talk to Google or anybody because it's all going to be blocked. Right? The consensus? Everyone agree with that? Yes, no, maybe? I do. <coughs> okay, so maybe maybe Google, whatever, doesn't work. 10.10.2.10h uh, and do backup. And uh, it can't, it can't. It doesn't know what to do. We have no outbound traffic, so we can't we can't send anything out or get any response. So right now, this machine is pretty secure. It'll allow only incoming SSH and web. So this is like a web server. This machine. Would be. So this is a different way of doing it, though. Like what you did was append a drop rule at the end, but what this does is it changes the default policy. So if you go back and look at the tables, you know how at the top it says like input um, policy. Now, if you go back to the oh, the, the terminal, mm -hmm. like policy accept, the chain output policy accept, right? Uh, you so can make the default policy be like drop or reject, so you don't have to add that last rule. So the only danger with doing the policy thing is if you flush your tables and you have the policy drop or reject, you're you've kicked yourself out of the machine completely. You can only get back in through the console. Um, so yeah, what, she would, what Veronica was just saying, um, the dash P in the slide means that anything coming in, we're going to change the policy of the input to be dropped. We didn't do that in this case. In this case, we just appended that rule. Um, so if we flush the IP tables right now, we're still safe. We're not kick we haven't kicked ourselves out. But if we did the dash P and change this policy to drop, flush the tables, we'd be locked out of the machine. So uh, I can do a demo afterwards because I still have other slides. I can, I can get the console. Uh, we'll, we can take it for after. Because then I have to find a new machine to connect with. So as a quick summary of the demos that we did, uh, these are all the statements that we did. And do you guys understand it? John, can you explain this one to me? First one. Except the local host. Except local host. So what? So what does this mean? Dash A input. What's that mean? Except input. No. Dash A stands for append. 
to the input chain. Okay? So we have three chains. We have input, output, and then um, forward. But we don't use forward in this case. So we're appending to anything coming in, coming in from the local uh, interface, and loopback adapter. And we're going to jump to an accept table. We're going to accept it. Um, someone want to get a stab at this one? Can I give it a shot? So the first line is the same as the top one. Yep. So what, what's the dash A mean? Dash A input? Dash input. Append input. Append input. Yeah. And the dash A means match. Uh, match the state where the state is established or related. And what's the J, uh, J accept stand for? Right. So when this condition is true, we're going to jump to the accept state. Uh, Joe, what does this one mean? Oh, <coughs> uh, append to the input chain anything with a TCP protocol where the destination port is set to 22, jump to the accept bin. Good. And you want to get a stab at these? So P stands for changing the default policy of the oh, okay. policy. Yeah. So uh, again, the, the policy is indicated up here. So you, if we do like minus P input drop, it's going to drop all of them? It's going to say if, if none of these rules get matched, drop it. So it's essentially the same thing as this, right? This drop unconditionally at the bottom, except it's a default policy. So if you were to remove all these rules, the default policy would be to reject all traffic, to drop it out. So it, it's important to be careful with that policy. You've got to know what you're doing when you're dealing with that. So let's go to something uh, a little bit more advanced. So here we have, again, the default tags, the most common parameters, dash L to list, and dash V for verbose. Uh, with the verbose, we can see uh, more information about the adapter, in this case, the back adapter. We can get more information basically about what the IP tables are showing you. So an important thing with IP tables is uh, you might have all these rules written down, but as soon as you restart your machine, they're out the window. It's going to flush all those rules and you're going to start from scratch. So the uh, recommended way to get around this and to deal with this um, is to save and restore the IP tables uh, when your interface is coming up, when your network is coming up. So this is how we keep persistence, how to keep IP tables saved. So the command line rules to saving IP tables is IP tables dash save, and then redirect that to some file. In this case, Etsy default IP tables. Okay. Then when we want to restore those IP table rules that we just defined, we do free IP, IP tables restore, and we're going to pipe that same file. But we do this in the Etsy network interfaces file. So we can take a look at that. Right now, I think we have it defined. Uh, yeah. Etsy network. Oh. Does it set this? I just I just built a new Ubuntu machine on 11. You can see if it's you can, up. You can save it. Um, you can save it anywhere you want. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh. Oh. Nano's not found. No. <laughs> there you go. Uh, 11 should be up. Ubuntu on. Uh. So we can save. the save our rules to Etsy default uh, IP tables. Right. So now we have to modify the interfaces file on CentOS. I'm actually not sure what that is. I gotta look for it. Okay. Um, I can do look at it. Uh, but it, can you just run IP table save and see what it says? Yeah. I might flush it and then sorry. Okay. So IP table save is this output right here. It's basically all the list of cans we have minus the IP tables in the front. So here we have the three different uh, tables that we have, input, forward, and output. And here are the words. So here you can also directly type in the commands if you want. It's the same thing. Um, 
but when you when you modify this file, you always have to do an IP tables restore to get it back. So right now, if we do IP tables dash list, we have all our rules. We do an IP tables dash flush, and we removed all those rules, so they're all gone. All those rules we had are gone. So how do we get it back? IP tables restore NT defaults. So now, if we list everything in there, they're all back, magic. So we want to have this occur uh, when the network comes up and down, whenever we reboot, we reboot the machine. So there's many ways you can do this. You could put it in an RC uh, script file, right, like Joe talked about last week. You can put it in Etsy and D. You can write a little script to do this command. Um, but the best practices suggest that you do it when your network is coming up and down. So that's when you really need it. So Pico, or whatever editor you want. Um, now we got to find the um, adapter. What? Pico's not found here. Emacs is on there installed. Okay, Emacs. Uh, so this is not the file we're looking for. So we can locate interfaces, but I don't think it's called interfaces on CentOS. Well, 11's on. 210.11. 211. We should know where it is, right? Right. We should. So, um, Max, it's going to be in the Etsy directory. It's going to be under something called network. Netconfig is probably a good place to work. Um, nope, not it. Anyone else have any suggestions? Might just be a different format. Is this is this type of six or five? Six. It's in IF config dash eight zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so try to locate that file. IF CFG dash eight zero. Dash. Yeah, no dash. Yeah, uh, yeah, no dash there. Yeah. Espen, uh, dash. Dash L O right there. You see yeah. network scripts. So, all right. So in this case, you know, there's system config. That kind of makes sense. Network scripts. Right? So you need to make one. Oh, they have an IP tables rules in here. Oh, it might sound like IP tables for certain. Yeah. So, uh, in the previous version of CentOS 5, that this was not the case, uh, where they have this file that created. This is new. Or else, I remember when you have to, you have to modify whatever network files to get it to work. But in this case, CentOS provides you with an IP tables file where you can save and restore to. So right how, now, if you look at this list, this is not the list of rules we, we created. This is the default that it has. So what we could do is just simply just IP tables saved in this file. And we're good. If you notice, there's also an IP tables six config or six, and that's for IPv6 rules. I have no idea. I'm not going to be involved with that. So, it's a whole other ball. So right there. now, there's no firewall on the IP version six addresses. There probably is. I don't know. Yeah. Right. We you sure they didn't mysteriously upgrade the, the DHCP server in the middle of that to get with DHCP v6? So it looks like it's the same syntax. Everything looks pretty much the same, except you know, certain things require uh, to use the d6 version. Uh, it shouldn't be. It should not be. Uh, yeah. It's fine. It should be safe. Turn it off in with sys control. Oh. Sys control? What? 
So actually, I don't know if it exists with Tempest, it probably exists with Tempest, but with Fedora, there is a couple of programs that help you create IP pages. Um, there's a couple of links I have at the end of the slides. You guys can look at those and uh, they have programs for it. Anyone know how to disable IPv6? Yeah, it's in the uh, FTC <laughs> config network. Yeah, in the network. FTC config. Network. Okay, in the network. FTC config. Yeah, network. Oh, yeah, you remove. Um, you said it's a no, it says. Yeah. So it is a no. Okay, so it didn't work. <laughs> it's not as lying. Okay. Okay. So what else is under this? Oh, it's a mod. It's a, it's a module. So RM mod IPv6. Or do LS mods even listed there? <coughs> do you see an IPv6 listed there? Yeah. 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 Okay, so restart networking and then remove it. Service network, re oh, it's a service network. Oh, it's network. So now do it. That is not right. So there's more we have to look at. This is the first CentOS machine we put up. So um, some funky things that we're not really sure about. But you can Five. see that it only has a loopback adapter. It's not a spot. Six. Six. Yeah. Six. Yeah. I've never gone to the sysconfig file folder. Yeah, it's up. It's up. Well, there was only a loopback adapter. Yeah. 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 Y
address directly. <coughs> so it, it, it's equivalent to an IP address, except it's a lot bigger. Okay, so, so there's 128 bits in an IPv6 address. And it's set up to accommodate gigantic, a gigantic number of devices. So you have 2 to the 32 available hosts, you know, on, on IPv4. You have 2 to the 128, which is like insane. We'll never run out, we say now, <laughs> until, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get we'll to Mars before we run out. Okay, so this is uh, for a basic Linux system. You can do these, anything that has IP names. Save it to a file. Modify your interfaces file to do pre-IP, IP things are stored. And then this last line right here, this post down IP tables are stored. Um, that line is only useful if you continuously modify IP tables. So if you make a change to an IP table and you don't want to constantly do IP tables save to that file or whatever, uh, when your network goes down or when your computer shuts down, it saves the rules you have. So you just add this line again to that network interfaces file and it, and it saves the rules and restores them. So every time you add a new rule, it gets saved. You only have to ever do this once. Yeah. Uh, so in CentOS, uh, they have an IP tables file like we showed you. Etsy sysconfig IP tables. And that's the file that it, it will automatically load and save every time you reboot the system. You can just restore it to that same file. So here are some more uh, practical examples, I guess, to using IP tables. Um, so in this case, you have someone uh, spamming your network, right? They're, co they're just pinging you constantly. They're maybe trying to do a DOS attack. Maybe they're trying to figure out more information about you. So in this case, um, again, we're going to append to the input to protocol ICMP, where it's a type requiring a reply. And we're going to match recent name list. <coughs> so match recent. This means we're going to look to see who's been recently connected to us. And we're specifying a list, in this case called list, uh, that we're creating and we're going to set. So every time a packet comes in, we set a value on this new list. And that tells us that this guy has been on this machine or this packet has come through previously. And then we add this other rule that says uh, IP tables, pen to input. Uh, if it's a recent one and it's on this list, update the list, and when you've received 20 packets that are from the same guy, from the same type, drop it. So basically what this is doing is uh, we're only going to accept the first 20 ping requests from one given person. And then after that, it's just going to be dropped. So I don't really want to type this. Right, so, IP tables, we're just going to flush all the rules right now. So, uh, clear IP tables, the rules are empty. So, let's do IP tables, dash A, append to the input, protocol uh, ICMP, where it's ICMP type uh, is an echo reply. Match uh, recent events of the list called list, or let's call it spam. Right now. Uh, and we're going to create this list of the list. Alright, and then we're going to do IB tables. Uh, and input recent events on the name spam. Then we just do a spam list. We're going to update that list. We're going to check if they've reached the hit count being 20. And then we're going to just drop that packet. One clear one that I just wrote. It's a little verbose, but it'll be good. So let's try pinging local host. Um, we're going to do it 30 times. And I'm just going to set the interval to be fast. So, so as we can see, 
I sent 30 packets. Only 19 were sent back to me. The rest were all dropped. So that IP tables rule just uh, blocked the rest of my ping requests from my IP from the local website. Okay. So I can do it again. You see now this time my second run at it, I'm on that blocked list, so I can't. I'm not even going to get anything back. So this is going to time out eventually and say that you know, 30 packets transmitted, nothing was received. So the next uh, example we're going to show you is let's just allow us to connect to the web. And that's all we want to connect to. We don't want any other connections coming out of our machine. Um, so this is a pretty basic example. So let's do IP tables flush. Let's get rid of all the rules. IP tables dash append for the output. Jump to accept. Uh, when we match the state, we new, established, related, uh, outgoing interface of the zero, port TCMP, TCP, and port. I think the machine only has this one. Ah, uh, right. Okay. So I'll change it. Okay, so did I change it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm appending to our output chain. Uh, we're going to jump to accept when we match the following. We're going to match the state. We're going to see if the state is a new state, established, or related. We're going to keep it. So any outgoing traffic on our interface is zero. The protocol TCP. Uh, where our destination port, our AD and 443, we're going to accept. So, uh, so now I should be able to uh, get you get or something. Okay, and I got Google. Uh, so that's fine. And in this case, we have no rule to explicitly drop traffic. So let's add that rule. IP tables, so append to output. I might kill myself right now. I'm pretty sure I will. So let's append uh, to our output chain. Add exactly the same thing you did before this very time, too. So you have other things to add. Yeah, okay. Fine. I'm not going to kill myself. So IP tables, so append to the output. Drop. That's all I have to do. So right now, all of the traffic is dropped, and I think I just killed myself. <laughs> so why did I kill myself? I could do that. Huh? Anyone see? On this is. Yeah, that's a good question. No, but I'm not, I'm not listening. I'm, I'm on sticks, right? So I'm on a random port connected to 22. I'm not going out both uh, to 22. Right. So I just the destination us. port is 22. Yeah. Right. But, but you're sending the 22. Right. This, uh, this says, 22. if I'm on this machine, I'm going to allow SSH out. It doesn't say I'm allowing SSH in or anything. So. Oh, because it's the output. Yeah. Uh, uh. So right now, I'm not getting any response back. I'm not connected on 22. I'm connected on some random port. So my, my laptop is connected to this machine who's hosting 22. But I'm on some random port, 5008, connecting to port 22. So I've officially just killed myself. So this is, this is very common when you're working with IP tables. This is constantly going to happen to you. Um, how can I fix it? I'm going to the console right now. <laughs> so with SSH, can I specify the port that I want to connect to? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, Maybe. It probably tells you. Tom, why did I hose myself? I told you guys I would. So why? Tom wasn't here. 
What, you dropped everything? <laughs> what? Sure, but take a look at what I have there. So, I've allowed I've allowed outbound port 22. So on this machine, this server, I'm allowing outbound request of 22. The problem is on my laptop, I'm on some random port connecting to port 22. So I've killed myself because I didn't type it out properly. Well, you just have to change the search word, right? Like coming from 22. Yeah, because that machine has a the other rule here usually is if you're going to be doing this stuff, you should be on the console. <laughs> yeah. That's another rule. So, uh, that's best practice. Sorry, another rule, best practice. Right. <laughs> the problem is um, you guys don't have access to the console. So you got to be very careful. And if you get locked out, just spam Joe. <laughs> we'll have to restart for you. That's why if you guys want to help me on Yeah. We'll crop, we'll crop it up. We're going to do a KVM thing. We have a web interface and consoles and everything. That actually would be doable. You know, you in the KVM over to this budget? Take one, take, take your server. The thing is, the thing is, ESX it. was up quickly. Yeah, ESX is the best. But this, <laughs> will, this will allow you to give you, you know, console access to these machines I mean, without giving yeah. them. You can, you can still do with ESX. Without giving them Windows hosts to run vSERV? Um, no, you just have to install the client. Yeah, but K KVM is a web client, right? No, no, no. KVM is, is the Linux. They're, they're getting wrong hacking. Linux virtualization? Yeah, well, yeah, there's, there's KVM, Zen, and, you know. Right, exactly. Right. But, uh, but they've got yeah, the web they, 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 you can say, I want to move me out. Yeah, but if vSphere only runs in on Windows. Right. But most of them are running Windows anyway, though, right? Well, enough or wrong. you could actually put a VM up that they could, not, they could RDC to. It's not giving them a reason to keep running Windows. No, but <laughs> so put, you should put up a, a, a VM that they can RDC into. That they can run that and, and just just get to their client's console. Yeah. In case they need to. So this is important. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I think you guys understand the importance of this, right? I'm not going to spend more time doing this example again. I mean, right now we're allowing us to connect to the internet and that's it, to the, to the web, to web servers and that's it. So this will prevent, um, you know, all those shells that we have on the machines from talking out on the, on the ports. Okay. So let's continue to, I think, I think this is the last example I have. And uh, the other powerful thing about IV tables is logging traffic. So. Uh, the great thing about logging is um, it doesn't affect the traffic. It just it just lets you know that a packet went through here. So in this case, right, the only difference between the regular syntax is your jump state. Um, instead of jumping to accept or drop, you jump to log. Right? So in this case, we're we're saying IP tables append to the input chain. Uh, jump to log if the protocol is ICMP. So let's log every ping request coming into this machine or any sort of ICMP protocol coming in. Okay? So let's see if we can do that real quick. Um, so let's uh, append to the input. And then we're going to jump to the log. And the protocol is going to be ICMP. And that would block everything that's coming in? That's not going to block or do anything. It's just going to log any ICMP requests. Okay. Right. So only things? Yeah, sort of. It's not going to block. It's going to log. So I've added that rule. Now let me see if I can open up another session here. So I just want to uh, I just want to be tailing the log files to show you the ping requests at the same time. So my password is 
So all my examples I did in Ubuntu. So the log file might be different on uh, centers. So log, log, and uh, let's see what we have. I think it's messages in this case. Ubuntu doesn't have that. It's a D message. It's just a D message. Not more than once we have. There's a syslog and a D message. Right. So on Ubuntu, you would look at the syslog uh, file yep. to show you that request. So now, on the right screen, we have uh, we're following the log files to see if anything's coming in. So let's do a ping on localhost. Um, just do 20 pings, change the interval to be real fast. You see how it's logging all those ping requests coming in? So we've just effectively uh, put a packet, not a packet sniffer, but we, we've tracked incoming requests through ICMP. So this is really, really useful, right? This is great to see what's going on in your network. Um, so the great thing about logging is uh, you, know, you can put a little prefix on there so that you can filter the logs as you want. So in this case, again, if we log ICMP traffic, we can do a log prefix with a string, whatever string we want. And so I can do this example if you guys want. But all it's going to do is just, you're going to see that string inside the message. So you can grab for it. So you can grab for it, right? So this is great because you can, you, can, you can break it down. You can make one strictly for web, one strictly for SSH, one for everything else, one for UDP, whatever you want. You can track and separate and filter things in the logs to make life easier for you. Uh, it's a great way to find out who's trying to connect to you, who's on your systems, where they're coming from, and how they're getting around your name. So let's do the prefix, right? All right, let's flush the tables. It's going to go to that rule automatically. And let's just do log prefix. Uh, what do you guys want to call it? Gripping. Gripping for thing. Right. Uh, it doesn't matter what you type in here. It's not case sensitive. Right? So now if we mm. follow our logs, we can run the same ping in here. And now we see prepping for ping in here. So in this case, it's fairly verbose. And with the log, you can specify the verbosity by doing um, dash log level, log dash level. And, uh, you can see gripping for ping, where it came from, the MAC address of the request, uh, the source IP, the destination, the length, you know, time to live, there's a lot. The protocol, and this is great for filtering. Right? So, and Ubuntu, like I said, you have to follow the syslog, um, or else on other systems it might be messages. It just depends on where it's monitoring that traffic. That's the end. And, um, if you guys want to learn more, uh, these are really great websites to go to. This first link right, uh, gives you a really great, fairly detailed information about how to create IP tables. What are they for? What are they for? Um, then there's a link to Ubuntu's help documentation on IP tables. Uh, then there's that more IP table rules, which can give you some cool rules that you can do with it. And then if you want really detailed information about, you know, uh, a recent or um, limiting or whatever, you would go to that last link. And that, that's like five paragraphs 